Zoe, good morning to you. Just explain to who you are. What, what is this group? And are you linked to Extinction Rebellion? Hi, Simon. Hi, Kirsty. Good to meet you both. Um, we're a group of really concerned citizens, ordinary people who are very, very scared about the code red climate emergency that we're in. And we're demanding the simplest action from government that they need to get on and insulate the homes of British people to reduce emissions, create jobs and eradicate fuel poverty. It's that simple, Simon. Um, Zoe, good morning. I, I always wonder with, with these protests, I mean, this, this was going quite far uh, on a Monday, um, you know, really, really causing uh, a lot of not, not just chaos, but distress for people. Uh, we're seeing the pictures now. In fact, I, I experienced it, if I'm honest, and it was a bit of a nightmare. Uh, a lot of people very, very um, angry with your actions. Was, do you think, I mean, do you discuss how you're going to protest and do you all have to agree on that? Because I'm quite interested in that. Well, Kirsty, what I would say is I'm, I'm sincerely sorry that um, you were personally caught up in this and for everyone personally caught up in this. This is the last thing that I and others want to do. And none of us were brought up to want to disrupt ordinary people's lives. But this is the situation we're in. I mean, it, it's so dire. Um, governments are 20, 30 years too late in taking real action on the climate emergency to reduce our emissions. So we, we all feel that we're left with absolutely no choice. There are no easy choices left anymore. That, that's the point, and it's awful. Are you, are you talk, you're talking to us from home, aren't you, in Warrington? Yes. How's the, how's the house insulated? What's what's the official rating on that house? <laughs> it's a kind of bizarre question. One house doesn't make, make that much difference on its own. What we need is well, no, no, no. Uh, hang, on, hang, hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. You, you're saying uh, insulation is, is, is something we all need to be concerned about. I'm just asking. It's a straight question. Uh, what, what's the insulation rating of your home? I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm interested. And I think it's. I think it's about a B, Simon, because we've done lots of things to it to try to get it to, try to improve the rating. But it, lots of people can't do that. You see, that's the problem. Lots of people aren't in a position to be able to do what's necessary for their homes. And actually, the industry, the, the skills industry isn't actually even ready because we need a government wide uh, stimulus to organise something at the scale and pace that's needed for all 29, 000, uh, 29 million homes in the country to get off the gas grid. I think what, what's so, so important to get across is this is the best bang for the buck. Uh, retrofitting all the homes in this country is the best bang for the buck in terms of uh, government expenditure to reduce emissions. It's a payback, Simon. It's an investment. It, it's a payback both in terms of the economy and it's a payback on energy efficiency. It's a no-brainer. We just need them to do it. But what, what do you say to the... And, and, and I know this is true because we had emails confirming this that on, uh, on Monday... There were, there were delivery drivers, there were people to, trying to deliver packages who that day earned nothing. They'd been on the road all day, sitting in traffic, earned zero. How is this helping your cause? Son, I, I know it's absolutely awful that it's come to this. And what we have to be asking as well is why ordinary people like you know, bricklayers... Um, care workers are, are on the roads doing this. They're, they're desperate for, for change. What we heard yesterday in a report out yesterday, surveying young people, young people around the world, including in the UK, is they feel betrayed, ignored and abandoned by governments and by adults. Because all governments around the world, and frankly, a lot of adults, parents and grandparents, are not taking this emergency seriously enough. So what we're asking for is real practical action by this country, by this government, to insulate our homes and reduce emissions. It will cut 20% of emissions. And the industry, the, the construction industry, architects, experts are totally in support of this. And they've been crying out for it for years. And the government's been faffing about. We need we need proportionate action on this emergency and we're not seeing it. And that's why, the, you know, our young people are crying out for real action to reduce emissions because effectively this government is gaslighting them. It's gaslighting our young people and all of us. It's saying on the one hand that it's doing things and it recognises we're in a climate emergency. On the other hand, it's opening new oil fields and huge infrastructure projects like 27 billion on roads and HS2 to destroy our habitats and wildlife. It's crazy. They do one thing and they say another. No, uh, no wonder our children and young people are desperate. Um, I just want to ask you, uh, do you think that 
Monday worked? I mean, what, what, what's the reaction been? I mean, you know the reaction from the general public. It, it's not great. You've had 77 arrests, 60 on the day, another 17 in the last day or so. I mean, do you feel that this is working, Zoe? Do you think that people are going to listen? Well, what, what we're clear about, Kirsty, is that um, when we get a statement from the government that we can trust that says they're going to take some proportionate action to insulate the homes of this in this country, that's when we'll get off the roads. It's that simple. They just need to commit to some real action and we'll get off the roads. I've, I've just had an email from someone saying, looking at your house, you've got sash windows, uh, you, the, the, you're not practicing what you preach. I don't know who, how, how you're financed, how you can all take the day off work to do this sort of thing. And, and, and do you understand the anger there is that you are creating amongst people, many of whom absolutely get what you're talking about, that, that you are actually hurting many of your own supporters with this? And I, you know, I, you tend to be middle class of a certain age with a bit of time on your hands, and that's the perception of this group. And I want to know who funds you. Well, we're volunteers. I'm, <laughs> I'm a volunteer. Um, I, I'm self-employed and I've given up quite a lot of my time and energies to, to do this and so have lots of other people. You know, the, the, the people, the electricians, the bricklayers, the care workers, we take holiday. We take holiday off our jobs to do this because we care so much because we're so desperate. Look, the story is not about us, Simon. The story is about the fact that we're in code red for humanity. Now, what I would love for you to do is to interview Sir David King. Please, please have him on your show. Sir David King is the former chief scientific advisor to the UK government, and he is crystal clear, saying we've got three to four years. What governments do in the next three to four years will define the future of humanity for, for thousands of years to come. This is what we're talking about. This is why our young people are desperate for real action. They get it. We Zoe, need we all, to, we, Zoe, we all get it. Everybody knows that there is a climate emergency. Why the government but what they don't understand government. is what, what is the good of having thousands of cars parked on the M25, all with their engines running. How are you helping? Because, unfortunately, governments don't listen unless we cause disruption. It's awful. We don't want to have to do this, but Zoe, they're not listening. Zoe, there's the COP26, the, the, the first, the biggest discussion between governments of the world coming to this country. You cannot possibly say they're not taking this seriously. Yes, we can, because emissions are not coming down, Simon. You have to look at the actual science. I mean, young people are saying that in this country, there's 28% of young people in this country trust the government. And I'm surprised it's that high, to be honest. Um, well, that's a different issue. You're, you're, not, you're now conflating a trust in the government with one specific issue. I mean, you can't no. have it always here. What I'm saying is that there is evidence after evidence that this government is not actually doing enough. There was a report only a couple of days ago that showed that the plans they have in place, such as they are, are only going to deliver less than a quarter of the emissions reductions that the government have committed to. And their own targets are insufficient. This is about insulating the homes of British people. One in 10 households in this country have to choose between heating and eating, Simon. That's not OK in the sixth biggest economy on But why is it OK Earth? for you to disrupt my life and the life of everyone else who, who it's on Monday... Cool. There, were, there were some people who were trying to visit sick people in hospital who couldn't get there. there. There was one lady phoned a radio station uh, and she was concerned because her, her daughter with special needs was in a taxi and getting very upset at being in a... You know, there were people who really suffered because of what you did. And I just want... I'm not arguing with your message. I'm just arguing about how you think this is the right way to do it. There is no right way to do it. There is. Oh, there well, is, I agree with you on that. Unfortunately, unfortunately what, what history tells us is that time after time... People in power don't listen until uh, ordinary people stand up and cause disruption. We know that from uh, changes in, you know, through history, whether it's women getting the vote or um, you know, all sorts of changes. Most of the rights that we have as, uh, in modern, modern life are because of protest. And so unfortunately, that's what we have to do. People in power don't listen otherwise. So what choice have we got as ordinary people? I've voted all my life and it's made no difference, Simon. There's never been an option on the ballot box to say, do what's necessary for the climate emergency. There's never been an option. Tell me what we should do that isn't involving disruption that will make a real difference to our children's future. And I what will car, do what it. What car do you and drive, Zoe? What, what car do you drive? I drive, an, I drive an electric car, Simon, and you'll probably tell me I'm too middle class now for driving an electric car, won't you? 
What an individual does on their own cannot make the difference. We need government scale action. And we need they it go now. Go to Whitehall. Go and stand outside Downing Street. Why are you ruining the lives on a daily basis of the very people who you're trying, who are trying to get on your side? Unfortunately, going to Whitehall, which lots of protests have done, doesn't cause enough disruption for politicians to care. They start listening, but they don't take action. They start to talk the right words, but they don't take action. And we're giving them a really easy ask here. It's a, it's a straightforward, concrete ask. Do what's necessary and do what the building and construction industry have been, have been asking for for years and get on with the job of insulating our homes. It's the quickest, it's the, um, the best bang for the buck. You know, it's the best return on investment for climate action. Why aren't they doing it? Do they not want to eradicate fuel poverty? Surely you want to do that. Welcome to the GB News YouTube channel. You can watch us live 24 hours a day, catch up on your favourite shows and join in the conversation in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe and you'll never miss any of our exclusive content.